Hello everyone and welcome back to another a very exciting chess game from the history of chess. And in this chess game, uh, I like to show you a very special chess game. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite chess games of all times. And in this chess game, we have James Mason with the white pieces and his opponent is Simon Vinever. So Mason was one of the leading chess players at the time and Vinever was also a pretty strong chess player. He was from Poland, a chess master from Poland, and he was the chess champion of Germany in 1883. So this chess game was played in 1882 in Vienna. So just one year later, Wienerwehr became the chess champion of Germany, a pretty strong chess player for that time. In this chess game, Mason had the white pieces, so let's see what happened, especially the final combinations in this chess game is a must see and the final combinations of this very beautiful chess game makes this chess game an immortal and a very special chess game. So let's see what happened, a Mason starts the game with e4, we have e5 and then knight to f3 and then bishop to c4, so this is the Italian game, bishop to c5, Gieco piano. And not Evans Gambit, uh, so Mason was not a romantic chess player, he was more logical uh, and he was actually quite a modern chess player for that time. So instead of playing the Evans Gambit, uh, he played d3, but if this was Paul Morphy, he would have played the Evans Gambit 100%, <laughs> or maybe not. Uh, so d6, and Mason played bishop to e3 he wants to exchange the bishops which is not a an unlogical move actually if exchanging the bishops then white can potentially open the f file and he can use the f file the semi open file with his rook after castling from the king side so not capturing the bishop bishop to b6 he also one another side note only for the records of course you probably know this but Mason was the founder uh, of the London system, which is also known as the Mason system, I believe. So I think he was uh, one of the first chess players uh, who popularized the London system. So developing the knight, h6, knight to f1, knight to f6, h3, knight to e7, and knight to g3, c6. So planning to play d5, Mason goes back. And finally capturing the pawn, f takes on e3, well, Vinever couldn't resist it, the temptation, also maybe he doesn't have any other creative ideas, so if you don't know what to do, exchanging the pieces is not too bad actually, simplifying the game and hoping for the best. So, queen to b6 and attacking the e pawn, queen to d2, defending and a5. So a4 is on the cards, c3 giving air to the bishop, a4 and then bishop to d1, bishop to e6. And in this position, Mason castled, queen to c7, knight to h4, so targeting on f5. So if trying to defend, let's say, with g6, then rook takes knight. So it is already looking not very good for black because now Mason is calmly activating his bishop a little bit more, bishop to c2, and then c5, and finally landing on f5. So bishop takes on f5, knight takes on f5, knight takes, rook takes on f5, knight to d7, and doubling the rooks, attacking the f pawn, and black is defending, and mason played bishop to d1, very logical move, now he is going to target the weak, the weak light squares with his bishop, so a3 and Mason is simply checking the king and black is losing the casting rights. And then b3 by Mason, rook over, rook back. So we can say that the position is fairly closed. Uh, so Mason uh, wants to target some of the weaknesses. So he is opportunistic and looking for some weaknesses. So targeting the weak pawn, black is defending like this, but... The rooks are not connected, uh, that is the downside. So black doesn't have perfect coordination, but the material is even and the position is a little bit more, a uh, little bit closed. 
So both players wants to open the position. They are seeking some opportunities. So bishop goes back and placing the bishop in this long diagonal, controlling the important diagonal with his light, light square bishop. So queen to e7 and then bishop to e2, connecting to rooks and finally d4. Mason wants to open some lines for attacking opportunities. c4 and rook over by Mason. Well, in this position, actually after Mason pushed the d pawn, uh, let's not forget that, this is also attacking the b pawn. So Vinever is defending like this and then rook to b1 and Mason simply wants to capture the pawn and then he is going to open the b file for the rook. So we have g5 simply capturing the pawn and finally rook to b4 and how to defend bishop takes on c4. So defending with the queen, queen to e6 but in this position there is a very simple move that wins for white actually. So white gets the advantage, it is not like winning on the spot, winning the chess game or something but white is getting an important positional advantage. So can you see that move which is very simple. It is d5 of course, so black has to defend the queen and then mason simply captured on c4 and white is a pawn up. So if knight takes bishop, rook takes knight of course that is losing the queen. So knight to a4 and then bishop to b5 defending the knight and queen to e2 f5. Well uh, with queen to e2 mason is also targeting uh, the open uh, h file. So he's targeting on h5 and he wants to infiltrate with his queen. So okay, so we have e takes on f5 and then e4 and not rushing. So he played bishop to c6 after defending the rook, finally getting in with the queen and attacking the h pawn. Now black has to defend this because then black's position is going to collapse very soon. Uh, very quickly his position is going to collapse. So black is defending like this, rook to f6, but, but we can say that black has poor coordination. Black pieces are lacking in coordination. So in this position after queen to h5, well actually rook to h8 is also losing, actually this is losing on the spot because the queen infiltrates queen to f7. So what else? After moving the king we can check forking the king and the rook but after of course king to c7 we are going to check again and after this move a black has to block a, of course not with the queen that is losing the queen so knight to d7 and simply capturing the knight and this is all over because if queen takes bishop then check and this is losing the queen and the chess game and after queen to f7 if immediately blocking with the knight then rook takes on b8 if queen takes, then queen takes knight. So king takes, bishop takes on d7. And black can resign actually in this position. So after bishop to c6, rook over and finally infiltrating with the queen and black is defending like this, rook to f6 and mason played a very strong move in this position. Actually that is the best move I believe. Uh, this move, rook to f6 move, has a downside and that is, did you see the move? Ooh, rook takes on g5, of course, a very good move and white is infiltrating with the queen. So what else? Capturing, sacrificing the whole rook but white has important compensation. Queen to h7, checking the king and blocking with the knight. Actually black has a very difficult position, defending is very difficult. So if king to d8, then we have check, forking the king and the rook. So if king to e7, defending like this, then queen to g7. So rook to f7 doesn't work because of f6. And this is the only move. Rook is pinned, capturing the rook and black can resign. This is all over. White has three extra pawns in a winning position. So after queen to h7, we have knight to d7, not moving the king because that is basically losing by force but this is also losing. Mason plate, bishop takes on d7. Now we are slowly reaching the final very beautiful combination of this chess game that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. 
So we have defending the queen, queen to g8, and why not capturing the bishop? Then rook to c4, of course this is losing by force. Actually this is losing the queen by force. So queen takes on d7. Very strong moves by Mason. So bishop takes on d7 and defending and hoping to exchange the queens. And now this is the moment. The few final combination of this chess game uh, stayed with me for a very long time actually because it is simply very beautiful, very aesthetic and extremely interactive. So maybe if you haven't seen this chess game, can you see uh, some of the important moves in this position? Basically white is winning the queen by force and Mason played this incredible move, rook to be seven, what a move. What a move and what a move. Sacrificing the second rook. Unbelievable. Simply beautiful. And we have king takes on b7, but rook takes doesn't work. If rook takes on b7, then simply capturing the queen, of course. And if king takes bishop, then you can see the poor coordination of the rooks. Checking the king, forking the king and the rook. And that's all over. So Mason played, Bishop takes on d7, and then Rook to b7. And well, after Rook to b7, of course, this is why we have King takes on b7. But why did Mason did that? I mean, what was his purpose? Why did he sacrifice the whole Rook? Isn't this just simply losing for White? If you haven't seen this chess game before, can you see the next, the second? Very aesthetically beautiful move of James Mason, which was a piece of art. I mean, of course, if you haven't seen this chess game before, as this chess game is actually quite famous. Okay, so Mason played bishop to c8. What a move, what a move. Simply beautiful. And this is disconnecting the rook with the queen and this is discovered check, double check. You can capture the bishop with the queen because this is checking the king with the queen. You can capture the bishop with the rook because this is checking the king with the queen and with the bishop as well. Discovered check, double check. Disconnecting the rook with the queen and losing the queen. Uh, Binever played king to a8 and if capturing the bishop with the king, uh, if king takes on c8, capturing the queen with check and losing this rook as well. So after king goes down, it doesn't matter where on the seventh rank. Then queen to g7, forking the king and the rook. It's all over, easily winning for white. So after bishop to c8, moving the king and Mason simply captured the queen and this is easily winning for white. Beautiful combinations, isn't it? Beautiful, stunningly beautiful moves by Mason. So, rook takes pawn, still fighting hard, but queen to d8, threatening checkmate actually, queen to a5. So, defending that with capturing the pawn. Queen to d7, again, threatening queen to a4, blocking with the rook, queen takes rook, checkmate. So, rook to b1, checking the king, and then rook to d2. Mason played queen to c6, and... Queen takes on e4, sacrificing the bishop. No, it is a taking the rook. <laughs> so we have rook from b to b2. And it looks like black is a taking on g2. The g2 pawn is pinned. It looks like a white can't defend this. But Mason played a very logical and a very simple move. He played bishop to e6, of course. So if rook takes pawn, queen takes rook, rook takes queen, king takes rook. And white is a piece up. And also this move is defending on a2. A very beautiful and a very logical move by Mason. So we have king to c7 and queen to c4. King to b6. Well, this is basically all over. Mason played bishop to d5 and defending on g2. And also targeting the king. So we have g4, a desperate move. h takes on g4. Rook to f2. And Mason uh, is easily winning in this position, of course. 
So king to a7, well king to a5 has a downside and that is bishop to c4 and good luck defending. So king to a7, Mason played a move and Binawer resigned. Queen to c7 and the Polish chess master resigned. What an incredible chess game by Mason. He simply outclassed his opponent. Unbelievable chess game. The possible continuation, king to a6 and then check. And the only defense is blocking with the rook and this is winning the rook and black is not going to survive for too long. He is going to get checkmated very soon. What a beautiful, incredible chess game, especially the final combination is simply brilliant, aesthetically beautiful. So let's check out that combination again. Uh, first, so first bishop takes on d7 and then rook to b7 and then bishop to c8 and everything is falling apart from now on as you know so uh, around here black resigned okay queen to c7 and binaver resigned at move 56 so okay Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time with more interactive amazing chess games. Stay safe, take care and bye bye.